Should your next computer be a MacBook or an iPad? Apple is making the iPad more powerful and capable every year. It might be good enough that you don't need a regular computer in your life. Here are the pros and cons of each. Number one, the iPad is easier to pick up and use. The Mac is easier to use than a Windows PC. We all know that. But the iPad blows both of them out of the water. Your iPhone and your iPad act like app consoles. The starting point is the home screen. You can tap on any app to launch it, swipe up to go back. You can add more apps from the App Store, and you can immediately delete them anytime you want. You never have to think about the underlying file system of your iPad. It's completely invisible. On the Mac, however, the Finder is the foundation of the whole system. And what I'm about to say might sound crazy to people of a certain age who are computer nerds, but to ordinary people who've never spent a lot of time with a Mac or a PC, the Finder is confusing to use, and the concept of a file system is completely unfamiliar to them. Number two, on the other hand, the Mac has more powerful software. A tale as old as time, or at least as old as the iPad Pro, is that the hardware is more than capable, but the software holds it back. What do people actually mean when they say that? Well, in a nutshell, for one, iPad OS can only play one thing at a time. You can't play two videos, or a video and music, or a video and a podcast simultaneously. iPad apps aren't allowed to do any substantial tasks in the background. Rendering a video in Final Cut, or using a generative AI tool, immediately stops if you switch focus to any other app, even in their desktop windowing mode stage manager. iPad OS won't let you take a phone call or a video call while you're recording audio through a microphone, so you can't use it for podcasting. Files and Quick Look only offer the bare basics compared to their Mac counterparts of Finder, Preview, and Disk Utility. iPad apps are sandboxed, so you can't have any system-wide utilities, like backup tools, clipboard managers, context-aware note-taking or to-do apps, keyboard macros, or app launchers. Without Terminal and Xcode, you can't build and install open source software yourself. And without Hypervisor, you can't virtualize Windows, Linux, or even Mac OS. Now understandably, not everybody needs to do these things, and Apple is doing a very good job of adding Mac-exclusive features to the iPad in a painfully slow drip over time. But if any of these are a deal breaker, you need a Mac. Number three, on the other hand, the iPad has a bunch of features that the Mac doesn't, because the iPad is modular. A MacBook only really has two modes. You can use it like a laptop out of the box with the built-in display keyboard and mouse, or at a desk, you can plug it into a display and use it as if it's a desktop Mac. The iPad, however, is more versatile. Out of the box, it's a handheld, touch-first tablet, with the Apple Pencil, it's a stylus-driven drawing tablet and notebook. With the Magic Keyboard, it's a laptop with a built-in keyboard and mouse. You can plug in an external display and turn on Stage Manager for desktop computer-style multitasking. You can even use an iPad as a secondary display to a Mac with Sidecar. The point is, the iPad is whatever you need it to be in the moment. A MacBook is a laptop whether you need the keyboard or not, and it's never a touchscreen device. On the other hand, number four, the Mac has more apps. It benefits from being an older, more reliable platform. Any app for any niche interest, hobby, or job probably has an app for the Mac, because the Mac has a big market of people who use it every day for their work, no matter what kind of work it is. And publishing a Mac app is as simple as making a Mac app and putting it up on a website. The iPad, on the other hand, has a huge market of people who use it casually and a smaller market of people who use it with a keyboard and trackpad like a computer. If you're making an app for the iPad, you don't know whether people are going to be poking at the screen with their fingers or using a precise pointing device like a mouse, trackpad, or Apple Pencil. And for that reason, iPad apps live in kind of a liminal space between smartphone apps and desktop apps. So if you have a niche hobby, there's probably apps being made for it, but you don't know if it's being made for iPad. Number five, everybody knows Apple products can be kind of expensive, but if you compare similar products in the lineup, the iPad is consistently cheaper than the equivalent MacBook. The base model iPad starts at 349, 
whereas the previous generation MacBook Air starts at $999. The iPad Air starts at $599, whereas the current model of MacBook Air starts at $1099. And the iPad Pro starts at $999, where the MacBook Pro starts at $1599. That's a $500 to $650 price gap if you're comparing iPad to MacBook. Now that difference disappears if you add in all the accessories and exactly match storage space, but if you just want the tablet or you don't need all of that accoutrement, you save significant money by going with the iPad instead. Finally, one more point in the iPad's favor, it's more durable. The MacBook is entirely self-contained in a pretty fragile design. You have the really skinny display connected by a mechanical hinge. It's a pretty complicated set of parts with many more things you can break. The iPad is just one slab. I'd like to see a toddler try and tear the display off of that. And it benefits from the keyboard and trackpad being a separate accessory that attaches magnetically. So you can replace either of them independent of the other one. If you're particularly accident prone, the iPad's simple design also means you can just throw it in a big bulky case. They make these hard shell cases for MacBooks, but because of the thin display and the folding design, they really can't offer the same degree of protection. So after all those pros and cons, where do I land personally? Neither. I'm a financially irresponsible weirdo, so I have a Mac Mini and a Vision Pro. I never need to do any serious computing anywhere other than this office, so I live the desktop Mac lifestyle. But if I could do it all over again, if I were still attending school, if I ever left the house, I would have an iPad as my primary computer. And for the occasional computer things that I need to do, I would have a cheap, secondhand Mac Mini. At Cult of Mac, we have a resident iPad guy. Ed Hardy has done all of his writing for us for years entirely on an iPad. In 2024, the iPad is more than enough computer for most people. Remember to like and subscribe. I'm D. Griffin Jones with Cult of Mac.